Once you have your ProFlame Remote by SIT installed and connected to your fireplace, let's download the iFlame app and connect it to the remote. Today we're using an Android device, so we'll be going to the Google Play Store. If I was using an Apple device, then obviously I would go to iTunes. So let's look for iFlame. There it is, first one that comes up. We'll click on that and we'll tell it to install. Once it's finished installing, the open tile will turn green and it's ready for us to connect. So the first thing we have to do then, as a first time user, is to create an account. So it's asking us to sign up. Let's give it a username and it's asking for a password. Now your password has to be a minimum of six characters. Obviously it can be more. You can use upper and lowercase letters and you can use numerals. What you can't do is have a space in there. So, and then it's asking for an email and we'll just type in my normal email address. Now it's signed up, it accepted our, our credentials, and it's asking us to confirm it. This is a security step to make sure nobody else can connect with your fireplace. It's going to send an email to the email address that you just typed in there. I find it helpful to have a secondary device. You're going to get that email from iCloud. So when it comes in, because you're going to need to type this in within 90 seconds. And again, that's for security reasons. So we've got a confirmation code email here now. And we'll type in our number and hit confirm. Success. It's now been confirmed. And we can start to use the app. Now you'll notice here I have some zones put in. That's the first thing it's going to ask for is a zone. And I've got home, office, hilltop. If you ever want to get rid of one of those, all you have to do is just slide to the side and hit delete, and it's gone. Uh, for this one, we're going to call it test. And the reason you want to put in zones is so you can segment different areas. So you've got a fireplace at your office and one at home like we do, or you have a secondary home, or you just want to divide up your indoor and outdoor appliances, you can do that this way. Now it's going to ask for location. Location, if you have your GPS on, will be automatic. It will pull up the address that you're at and tie it in. We're not doing that today, so I can show you how to manually put it in. Now, it's asking for your location. You have to give it permission in Android devices or you can't progress forward. iOS devices do not have to have that, but you do definitely have to allow it in Android. You can allow all the time or only when using the app. We'll hit all the time. GPS is not on, so I need to physically type in my zone. So for this one, we're just going to call it, uh, let's call it SIT test. And it's asking for a zone location. We're just going to put in Hendo for Hendersonville. And it's asking for the actual address and add zone. And see, it's immediately pulled up my SIT test. Notice the one I deleted is gone. My home and office are still showing. So here I'm going to touch the tile and it's going to pair my remote automatically. We call this tap and go. You typically would tap your phone to the remote, but you don't have to physically touch them. You just need to be in close proximity. Here we're within six inches, so immediately it finds it. It tells you what series it is, which is the S42, and it's telling you to name your fireplace. So typically this fireplace, you'd maybe name it Great Room, Den, uh, Outdoor, whatever you want to call it, but we'll just call this one uh, we'll call it test and then it's asking us for to make sure that's the right series serial number if we want company purchased from this is helpful to you guys in the future your serial number will be handy if you ever need it for any warranty purpose on your fireplace and again if you put where you purchased it from it just helps you remember who you might want to call and once it's done let's hit connect now as it connects you'll see the little blue bubbles bounce back and forth but very readily it connected of course, we called it test. You can see Bluetooth, signal strength, and now it's ready for us to actually connect the two together. The little blue bubbles bounce back and forth as they start to talk to each other. And you can see the remote acknowledged that it was there, and it's testing things out, and it's actually on, so we'll turn power off. And you see it immediately turned off. If we had our GPS on, it would be able to tell us what this outside temperature is, of course, here what you're seeing is it's showing you the off, uh, not actual temperature. And it's showing you the controls temperature. On the remote, you'll see what the actual temperature is in the room. Now we got some choices here. If you go over and touch the settings, 
It's very important on the SIT units that we actually turn on the functions that match the functions of the remote. So here you can see these are all grayed out. But we want to be able to use the fan control, so we'll touch it, turns blue. We want to be able to use the light control. Now this particular fireplace that it's connected to does not have any auxiliary, nor does it have split flow. That system where you can turn either the front or burn, back burner on by themselves. It's registering that that is the unit that we're looking at. You can have a choice down here, uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius display on your temperature, and then IPI, which is intermittent pilot ignition, or CPI, constant pilot ignition. Again, if they're turned blue, that means they're active. If they're grayed out, like auxiliary and split flow is here, it means inactive. Once you're done, you want to hit the check mark. And then again, it communicates back with the remote. And you can see we've added fan and we've added light to our system. So when I hit power and turn the unit on, you can see that it responded very quickly and it's going to match up the controls. Now when it's running and on, it's actually showing embers fly to let you know that the fireplace is currently functioning. So let's adjust flame height now. When I touch that, it's given me my choices from off all the way up to high. So let's just go to level four. Now when I do that, you'll see the unit has to coordinate with the other. So immediately it goes to high and then it counts back down to number four. And you can see that indicated by the bars on the remote. Now typically, you're not gonna be sitting there with a remote in one hand and your app in the other to watch them you'll just notice in the fireplace that it responds to the function that you asked for. But here, I just wanted to show you how it works. So let's turn on the fan. And I want to choose level two on the fan. So you notice the icon changes on the remote. It goes up to high and then counts back down to level two. And that all happens very rapidly, as you can tell. And the fireplace will respond the same. As long as those embers are flying, then of course means that your fireplace is on. Let's turn on the thermo. If you notice, I have three choices. I have off on the thermo, I have on, and I have smart. Smart thermostat is explained in the manual for the fireplace or the remote, but it just lets it coast up and down rather than the sharp on and offs, so you get a more even flow. Here we're gonna use on, and we wanna set a temperature. So you just run your finger around the circle to get a temperature. Let's go to 71. So just like you saw in the fan speeds or flame heights, the two units have to sync together. So the first thing it's gonna do is go up to high or 95 degrees. It's gonna stabilize there, tell the remote, hey, I'm with you. And then it counts itself back down to your set temperature. Now again, in actual operation, you're probably not going to be sitting there looking at your remote. You're just going to change the temperature and the fireplace is going to respond. But as you can see, I chose 71 degrees. It went to high and then counted itself back down so the two could talk to each other. Very simple. If I hit power off, boom, unit shuts off and immediately you see your embers quit flowing. So it's a simple, great interface, much easier to use. Just know that when you first connect, you will need to choose the settings so that it matches the settings that you have on your fireplace. And then the first time you use it, I know you're gonna look at your remote, just see that it goes up to high and then counts back down to what you set. Now you can take that remote, put it on the coffee table, put it in a drawer, put it on the bookcase behind a picture or books or whatever and it will control the fireplace with the app going forward. Hope that helps you get set up.